What's up, everybody? JB coming to you live. I am 100% permanent total Navy Desert Storm veteran, and today's message is going to blow your mind today's video. Before I get started, I want you to like the video, subscribe to the video, click on the bell for notifications, because we're getting ready to talk about the money. We're getting ready to talk about how do you unlock your money for you and your family. A lot of you right now got a lot of questions. You know, I get calls every single day. I have a whole queue to go down every single day calling people back. If I have not called you, send me a private message. If you, you got a voicemail and you haven't called back, call me back again. If you've seen a text message from me and you haven't called me back, that's your loss. This is 2022. This is a new year. There's a new compensation rating out and you're missing out. You're donating. You're, you're being a philanthropist when it comes to your money. You're donating all this money back to the government when it should be in your bank account. It should be direct deposit tax free into your bank account. I'm excited. I got a groove for a little bit before I get into this groove. Now, now if y'all watching this video and y'all don't know what this song is, come on, man. Y'all got to groove with me for a minute. I'm going to turn the music down in a minute. Mm. This is how you're going to feel when you got that 100% coming in on the first of every month. You want to groove to it. All right, I'm going to get around to it. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. I really do appreciate that today. Today is January 26th. It is Wednesday, 2022, and today we're going to talk, talk about uh, your eligibility because yesterday we, we talked about getting your diagnosis, uh, finding uh, the element number one. The day before that, we talked about your theories of service connection, filing secondaries uh, uh, after you filed a direct or you filed a direct when you should have filed a secondary, right? So you're messing up. So basically, we want to talk about eligibility today because there are a lot of people that are calling in that are just not eligible and they don't know what the eligibility is. They just got some inquiries they want to make. So I want to go over eligibility. Are you eligible? First of all, you got to have an active injury uh, to be talking about. We, there, there we go again, your current diagnosis. Second thing, you got to have active duty, uh, active duty training or inactive duty training. That's reservist. Those of you that are reservist, uh, this one you qualify under active duty training or you are inactive duty training. Those are your reserve veterans, okay? We're still the same whether you serve active duty or inactive duty training. Now, there's three types of injuries. This is element number two. I want to talk about this. We talked about element number one. And element number one is showing your current diagnosis within the 12 months of you filing your application, correct? All right, so we have, after we covered that out the way, I want to talk about something else too. Let's talk about discharges. If you have an other than honorable discharge, you have a bad conduct discharge uh, and a dishonorable discharge, you're going to need a discharge upgrade. So let me just clarify, if you are a veteran out there wondering if you need to get a discharge upgrade, if you fall into those categories, the answer to that question is yes. If you have an other than honorable discharge, a dishonorable discharge and a bad conduct discharge, you need to get an upgrade, okay? Just Google discharge upgrades, learn about the process, okay? All right, moving right along. Let's talk about element number two, ladies and gentlemen. There's something what we call pre-service injuries. Ladies and gentlemen, element number two of getting service connected is the main issues. Do you have something that was pre-service? How, how do you prove pre-service? There again, you gotta get your forms VA form SF-180, download it, Google it, fax it in with COVID-19 expedite, please, and look at your service treatment records. This is going to show when you first entered all the way up to your exit or separation. The time frame between that. I, myself, claimed a pre-service disability. That was tinea versicola. I had a rash around... I guess my back or neck. And, and as I got on, um, into the service, it got even worse. The degree of, dis, of severity uh, got worse. So I want you guys to understand that you're going to have pre-service injuries that can get connected. Matter of fact, my pre-service connection was 30% on tinea versicola, a rash. All right. So 
It's good to look at your service treatment records because you caught, you probably came into the military with something and got a waiver or maybe they let you in anyway. It wasn't that bad. And so they did that with me on TV versus Cola. All right. Pre-service disabilities. All right. You have to show every uh, in your entry that you went to dermatologists, of course, or you went to different specialists regarding that issue. And my service treatment record was documented. I went to dermatologists in Naval Air Station, Bremerton on the West Coast. I was stayed scratching, itching in the heat uh, on the ship. I got documentation after documentation. So, and here I am 24 years later filing a claim for it. I filed one time, ladies and gentlemen, and got 100% permanent total. So pre-service is one way, okay? Then we have in-service, in-service events. Ladies and gentlemen, again, going back to your service treatment records, they're gonna they mail it to you on a CD-ROM. A CD-ROM is gonna come in the mail. I wish I had it up here so you guys can see what it looks like, but let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, I hate to be off camera. Oh, I found it just that quick. Look, would you look at here? This is what the VA sends to you. I don't know if you guys can see that. My name is on it and everything. Uh, Records Management Center from St. Louis. This is my actual service treatment records on CD-ROM. The CD actually has logo from the government on it, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that. All right? This CD-ROM helped me make a lot of money. So you need to request VA form SF-180, okay? All right, so you're gonna see your in-service event. It's a chronological uh, sick call record. Chronological meaning it, it's gonna have date stamps. That's important. When you're doing your claim, it's, it's gonna be you know dated. My biggest injury was November 6, 1992. I remember that date so well because of this service treatment records. All right, so the in-service injury. Now, if you don't have your records, they said they lost your records or were burned in the file because I mean, it was some years where they, they had a fire. You need to have buddy statements notarized and signed. Some of you have buddies that are still alive. Make sure that you get the buddy statements. If they saw something with you, it corroborates the story, makes it more credible because you're dealing with doubt when you're doing service treatment records. All right, so you need to have the in-service. Let's talk about after service. So do you mean to tell me, Junie, you can get service connection three different ways? Yes, you can. After service, let's say, for instance, um, in my case, I had a broken nose from a fight that was a deviated septum and all that good stuff. And then I got my first diagnosis for sleep apnea uh, after I got out of the military. I got out of the military in 1995, ladies and gentlemen. That's a long time from here. And I got my first diagnosis with sleep apnea in 2008 when I was working for a private employer. I put that in my records. I went, I don't know what that, that test is called, but it's a sleep overnight sleep study. I put that in my C file. All right. Also, I went and got a new diagnosis because I knew I needed to qualify under the 12 month rule within the 12 months. I got a new sleep study done over at the VA at the sleep clinic on Arcadia drive in Atlanta. Okay. So this is what we call secondary claims. I had OSA from a deviated septum. I had a broken nose, which blocked my passageway, and now I have OSA. This is worth 10%, this is worth 50. You guys can miss out on a lot of different ways to maximize a high value claim, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So I want you guys to understand, we went on the eligibility part, pre-service, in-service, and after-service injuries. You got to show your proof. I had to go up on the sleep study currently, and I had to show that I had a, um, a, a primary first was a broken nose. I got that connected at the same time. Some people will ask the question, can you file a secondary and direct at the same time? Absolutely. There's nothing in the book. Actually, in the adjudication manual, it specifically says you can file a direct at the same time you file a secondary. Do not let anyone tell you that you cannot file sleep apnea or whatever or anxiety disorder at the same time uh, as you got sleep apnea secondary to your anxiety disorder. You can file it at the same time. Just know, just know that you're going to have to back up with evidence. All right. Now, let's talk about the third way is by presumptive disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, you got within one year when you get out of the service to claim a disability without a nexus letter. I will repeat when you separate from the military, you have 12 months to say, hey, I got an issue. And they're not going to ask you for a medical nexus. All right. Second thing on presumptives, contaminants, you know, from different wars like the Vietnam War, um, a Camp Lejeune water situation, contaminants, 
Third way is by POW, the Prisoners of War uh, will get you a presumptive disability covered, okay? So I don't want to talk too fast or too long about this subject. The main thing is you're finding out if you're eligible. Most of you are filing supplemental claims, so that doesn't pertain to you. You're already being paid by the VA, so that doesn't pertain to you. What mainly pertains to you, if you're already service-connected, is how do you increase your claim, ladies and gentlemen, that you already have, let's say, um, a 50% uh, service connection. You got tinnitus, you got uh, sinusitis, or you got some muscular issues, and you're wondering how can you get an increase. Well, you go under that third after service separation. There's some stuff that happened that was aggravated from your leg issue. Pain can cause anxiety, depression. Just an example, constant ringing of the ears, tinnitus can cause headaches. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of different things that can cause you to have a high value claim, but you just don't know the law. So I'm here to kind of make it clear to you guys. So how do you get uh, the element number two taken care of, your eligibility taken care of, the presumptive, the, we do not need a medical nexus. The next video we're going to be talking about, so stay tuned to it, we're going to be talking about element number three, ladies and gentlemen. Element number three, there's three elements of service connection. That's number one, you got to have a current diagnosis within a current year, within the 12 month. Number two, you got to show your in-service event, pre-service event, or after-service event. That's going to qualify them to trigger a CNP exam. Now, element number three is how you go to war with the VA. When it comes to seeing their CNP exams, they're going to put a doctor that they have paid in front of you to examine you and to make an opinion. And this opinion, ladies and gentlemen, is going to rock your world because it carries a lot of weight. Some of you already know what I'm talking about, veterans. You've already been through a CNP exam. You've already seen what the CNP examiner has said. They act like they're protecting this big vault of money away from you, and you got to go in there and sell that story. My company is created basically off of element three alone. My company is here to help you guys beat the VA, the CMP examiner, get into the end zone of a high value claim by meeting the requirements of element number three. We're going to help you with all three elements if you're lacking element number two. All right. If you're lacking element number one, we're going to coach you along on how to get that. But the main purpose of New Life Veterans, the insider program, is to get to element number three. If you have any questions below this video, just go ahead and comment below. Uh, if you like this video, if I explained a lot to you about the eligibility part and the th element number two, which is uh, very much important. Uh, if you haven't uh, shown that proof, if you haven't got your VA form SF-180 downloaded to get your DD-214 and your medical and your dental records, that is the form. I'm going to write this down. VA form. S as in Sierra. F as in Frank. 180. Ladies and gentlemen, VA form S as in Sam. F as in Frank 180. That's to get your service treatment records. You cannot go to a gunfight with a knife without having your service treatment records. They're going to look at your personnel records. Uh, that's something you can't uh, have privy to. Uh, this is something that's private. Uh, they're going to look at where you serve, what, what uh, detail or what battalion you was uh, attached to, what company, what squadron, uh, the hours on the books, the, the ship logs, all that kind of stuff. They got access to that. So with that being said, I hope you guys understood this uh, third video, or is it the second video? Uh, this is the third video, okay? Uh, like I said, we're doing a series of videos, so stay tuned to the next one. We're going to talk about element number three, and that's the most important element of getting service connected. Thank you so much for watching, and if you need a free consultation, please log on to newlifeveterans.com. That's spelled N-U-L-I-F-E, veterans, V-E-T-E-R-A-N-S.com. Schedule a free consultation today, and let's get you to a high-value claim. Thank you so much, and God bless.